G'day guys, Steve with Broken Sprocket. In this video, I'm going to be building the new rims for the RM125 project. So, let's get started. Okay, we're going to be building new rims for the RM125. I've chosen Excel gold rims. I'm using my standard hub. I have new spoke nipples and new stainless steel spokes. So we'll just start by spoking up the rear wheel first. Okay, we have new spokes here. We also have new nipples. Now, all the spokes on this particular wheel are all the exact same size and the exact same shape, so it doesn't really matter about having to sort out a short one to long ones or different bends. They're all the same in this wheel. On the hub, you will notice that there is a lower and an upper spoke. So we'll put the lower ones in first. Now with all the lower spokes in place, we will put the upper spokes in. When putting the upper spokes in, you must make sure that they go above the top of the lower spokes so that they sit on top. Now with the spokes on the hub on a crisscross pattern, it's time to get the rim, place it over over the hub and the writing where is the writing this stamped in writing here on my other bikes it seems to go opposite side to the disc so this is the side of the disc so it faces the opposite side now the spokes will naturally lay in their position you will notice that there are sp um, holes in the rims that point up and some that point down so it will be after the side that point up in the facing the direction of the spoke you'll be able to figure this out quite easy because the spokes will naturally line up with these holes I'm going to be applying some anti-seize lubricant to each one of the ends of these spokes so that each every time that you need to adjust the spokes or tighten them they won't seize up um, onto the spoke nipple one handy tip is to just get a couple of pieces of wood just to get the rim up a little bit because the hub is so big that the spokes are on so much of an angle and it was quite hard to put the spokes in so lifting it up a little bit just makes it that little bit easier to line these spokes up so you notice first I put all the upper spokes in first and they have the hole pointing up directly in line with the spoke that makes it just a little bit easier to get them out the way to line up with these um, lower spokes to line them up with their holes Now with all the right hand side of the wheel spoked, the spokes are all extremely loose, just simply flip the wheel over and spoke the other side. Starting again by putting the lower spokes in first. Now that all the spokes are in the rims, the rims are very loose, make sure all the uppers are on top of the lower spokes and just tighten each one of these nipples until there is just a small amount of thread left, probably only two threads out. Thank you. 
Okay, now that all the spokes are on and fairly even inside, they're all very loose. It's a good idea to give the wheel a jiggle, both sides, just to make sure all the spokes have seated and are sitting properly inside the rim. Now I'm just going to individually go along and tighten each spoke until it just nips onto the rim and just puts the very slightest amount of tension on the spoke not to tighten the spoke just so the spoke won't move anymore that's about it there and he just wanted to just be just be touching it okay now with these just sitting snug they're actually still fairly loose so there's still plenty of adjustment in them I need to get the rim in the middle of the hub now how you do that I take a measurement from the very top edge of this spoke to the top edge of this hub and I do that on both sides. So taking a measurement from the top spoke on this side to the very edge of this hub is 22 mils. So 22 mils and take one on the other side from the top edge of the spoke to the hub top edge of the hub, 6 mils. So the other side is 6 mil, 63, 6 mil. Now I need to split the difference which will be 16 mil. Now that's the difference between both. Now the reason for it is this side of the hub sticks out further from where the spokes start than the other side of the hub where the disc is. It's not as big. The other side's got the chain, the chain and sprocket there, so it's a lot more hub on that side. And I need to centre it between the spokes to the centre of the hub. So that 16mm difference should be should be 16mm difference to gain either side. I'll just show you what I mean. Okay, this table's probably not 100% perfect, but I've got the hub laying down. If I take a measurement from here, and I'm getting 32 to the edge of the rim. Now when I spin this wheel around and sit it on the other side of the hub, there should be a 16mm difference to compensate for the thickness of the hub on the other side. And I'm measuring at 48. And the difference should be 16 mils, and it is. Okay, so when you look at dead set in the center of the rim, you need the same amount of spokes. This is a measurement from spoke to spoke. Over. And because the hub is 16 millimeters wider on this side, I needed that measurement to be 16 mils greater than the measurement from this side so that it lines up center of the hub and that and it is it's now time to put the wheel on the truing stand now this here will act like an axle and this will just slide up to the bearings until it fits up snug like this and it just sits up in the bearing on the on the uh, hub and this one here on the other side slides up and just push it in until they're nice and snug then just tip it over like this. Tighten up this cleat. And there you have it. And that will just spin. Tighten up this axle section. And now this wheel will spin. Now with this indicator marker, we'll just line it up to the rim. Lock it in and see how much there is in movement. As you can see, there's a fair bit of movement in that. Okay, here's the highest point. So I want to pull that away. Okay, this section here is my high spot. So I want to pull the rim slightly that direction, which means I need to tighten these spokes here, which are extremely loose over a couple of a couple about three or four of them and pull that over just slightly we 
with a couple of minor adjustments I've got the side to side motion actually pretty good they'd be lucky if there's a millimeter in that and that's quite good for a dirt bike now let's just do the up and down movement okay finding the high spot on the rim is there compared to the low spot it's probably about one to two mils so find the high spot again here you need to tighten about four or five spokes here both sides and just pull that rim a little bit closer to the hub now small movements always the best so just go quarter of a turn each one there seems to be a low spot right here where that weld is I think that's throwing out some of my readings it's right where the weld is Okay, I've got pretty good readings from this side of the rim edge. I'm just going to spin the wheel around and check on this side because sometimes they can be just slightly out um, side to side, so we'll check it on the other side too. Okay, with the rim turned around, there's very little in that. I, I wouldn't try and run that anymore or find any more in that. It's actually quite good. Up and down is pretty good as well. Any imperfection I do have seems to be where this welded area is here so it's kind of a little bit out of shape where they've machined it and different things along there. That seems to be the biggest wave in it is where that welded area is. So now I'm happy with how true the wheel is spinning. It's time to tighten the spokes. Okay now it's time to tighten the spokes. Just pick a hole somewhere where your valve would go. I normally put a piece of tape there because there's more than one hole. Um, so I know that one there and I'll start on this one here and I'll give it half a turn uh, half a turn to tighten skip two go to this one half a turn tighten skip two and so on and so on until you get back to the hole and then once you get back to the hole start on the next spoke I'll move the tape around to here so I know I'm on this one, skip two and so on and so on until you get all the way around. Okay now I've gone all the way around once I just want to recheck my alignment to make sure I'm not pulling it out of any kind of alignment. It's still running true. So okay the reason you start on one spoke, tighten skip two and then tighten is because one spoke is pulling to the right hand side of the rim the other side the other spoke is pulling to the left now by the time you do that three times around you'll hit every single spoke and tighten the rim up evenly and hopefully that won't pull your wheel back out of any kind of alignment okay it's important to not over tighten your spokes you just want a nice little tin on them like this and probably about as tight as you would do the plastics on your bike Okay, the most important thing when truing your wheels and respoking and doing wheel builds is to just take your time and do minor adjustments on your spokes. That way you don't over chase it and just keep chasing back and forth. Just do minor adjustments and slowly, slowly, slowly pull the rim into alignment. Okay, back wheel is tight, complete. Time to move on to the front wheel.
Okay, here we are with the final results. We have new Dunlop tyres, new XL gold rims. We also have the gold locking nut and valve cap, new silver nipples, and stainless steel spokes, and the original hub. Overall, I'm happy with the way the wheels have turned out and it's exactly the look that I'm looking for. Now, if you're trying to do something like this by yourself, just take your time. You can do this by yourself. Take your time and just do minor adjustments as you go. To be honest, it took me longer to put the tyres on the rims than it took me to build the wheels because I'm just that hopeless at changing tyres and I was that scared of scratching the rims. Hey, watch this video next or go to the Broken Sprocket video library and choose another top video. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. After all, it's for free and guaranteed to make your day 20% better. If you're already a subscriber and you're having a bad day, just think it could have been 20% worse. You can also follow Broken Sprocket on Instagram. So, I'll see you in the next video.